Hi, I'm here today with Lisa Arnold. Lisa is one of the 333 group hosts. Uh, she's a gifted portrait artist and podcast host. And one of the things that Lisa uh, brings to her clients, as well as to the 333, is some beautiful ways of asking people questions and getting them to ponder and then ultimately taking photographs or videos of them expressing um, themselves very authentically. So the question that is core and central to Lisa's, um, Lisa's work is also the name of her podcast and the name of her group in the 333. And that is, how do you want to be seen? So I'll uh, have Lisa share that a little bit more with you when we have our conversation, but I just am so excited to have you today, um, Lisa, to talk a little bit about your experience in the 333 Collective. So at first, I just would love for you to share, you know, anything personally that uh, gives people that are listening an idea of what it is that has attracted you to the 333 and what you've experienced so far that you find meaningful and rewarding and makes you feel good about being a part of it. Well, thank you for this and for allowing me to be part of the group. Uh, it, it, what attracted me was, it's the same thing I keep hearing. It is connection. And it isn't just a surface connection. It's not just a thumbs up or a heart. Mm. It's really people wanting to be together. And I tend to veer strongly away from small talk. What I find here is that it, there's meaningful conversation. And, you know, one of the things I really like about the group is that there is a commonality, but it runs side by side with individual thought. So it is not as though we all have to think the same or have all the same interests to still be respectful and supportive and interested. And I think that that's, it's hard to find. Honestly, it's hard to find. Even pre-COVID, it was hard to find. But of course, that added its own challenges. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love hearing that. And I love um, how I, and I know I've seen you in a number of the 333 um, group conversations that we have on Zoom. They're I think we're now up to about 12 different groups that center around a number of different topics or passions. And like you, they're all hosted by 333 members. And that to me is the glory of it as well, is that it's giving us each an opportunity to share something that's meaningful or important to us or we're expert at with each other and sort of inspire and then be inspired. So tell me a little bit about, um, if you would, either some of the experiences you've had, but I also would love to have you share um, your vision for how your, how do you want to be seen group is evolving and what okay. you're thinking about offering for um, our members to experience with you. Well, the experiences I've had thus far is they're, they're wonderful. I have met people, even if it's just on a quick, uh, some of the monthly calls that you have where new people get to meet, come in and, you know, we can meet them. Or if I run across someone and I just introduce myself, inevitably I hear back from them. And again, it isn't just small talk and it, it's also not sales. So um, it's not the yeah. Facebook, it's not the LinkedIn. And that isn't to say there's anything wrong with those things. It's, it's not, it's just that this is a, a totally different place. It's a different place to be. And so that's been wonderful. And then even being able to be at, for instance, Jeannie Demers, where she's mm. hosted, oh my goodness, to have, to have such meaningful, sometimes conversation, but sometimes it's just thought-provoking work done with someone who is compassionate, professional, and who really wants to help people. Where, where do you get that, you know? And to yeah. know that everybody in the room, they could be coming from all four, all four corners of the earth. I mean, they could be coming from anywhere and we're all getting a glimpse into 
the genius of genie or wh whoever is offering whatever they're they're great at. Well, and I love too the it's like a gift from you know, there's something that happens to us over life. Some people, it's the way they serve all their lives. But inevitably, after 50, there's this craving to be able to serve and share mm -hmm. and give, you know, and help others with something maybe you've, you've learned through the course of a disruption or a challenge in your life. And Jeannie's, um, it's called the tap room, is fascinating because so many people like I believe will encounter it and have no idea what EFT tapping is and think yes. it's a little out there, but after one session with her, they'll realize the, the reality of that. So, so I'm glad I too find that um, she's been doing a beautiful job and people are enjoying that quite a bit. I think it's, I think it's an important thing to recognize too, that what it looks like from the outside may be very different than the experience. So even if you know what EFT tapping is, Jeannie's take on it is pretty personal. Yeah. And for instance, the most recent one had to do with being organized or disorganized and all the, the issues that we have with it. And it sounds almost academic. You know, yeah. you're thinking, well, I need to be organized, but it isn't. It deals with the core of who we are. And so that's just one example. And then the other people who are interested in travel or whatever it is that they love, you just know that it's not going to be a sales pitch. It's going to really be sharing something of value. So your group, I was very pleased that you were willing to be a host because, you know, your podcast, you interview some amazingly inspiring people and your conversations are, are fantastic, all centered on that one core question that you ask all of your clients and your podcast guests. So talk to us a little bit about what your thoughts are and plans are for the group within 333 that you're hosting. I want to design a, a space where people can talk about that, well, that question, how they really want to be seen. And it's another good example of what it looks like on the surface may be very different than the experience itself. Being a photographer, people may immediately equate what I have to share with, I can help you take a pretty picture. Mm. And that's fine. That's good. I love doing that. But the question is meant to really make us ponder, how do we want people to perceive us? Mm. And I just had a recording today. And the response from the woman, though she knew what the podcast was about, was, you know, I've never asked myself that question. And I think it's fair to say that's probably true most of the time. So to be able to host sort of roundtable discussions on the various layers that are involved with that question and how it's going to spread out, no, correction, how it does spread out in your life. Mm. So if the answer is, I don't want to be seen, well, how does that show up in your life? And so regardless of what the answer is, it's going to impact us. And I love the conversations that I am honored to have. And mm. I think it would be, hopefully it would be encouraging and thoughtful. Well, I believe that the, this time of our lives, many women, you know, post 50, let's say, which is the core of our audience, we're either going through a transition, we're planning one, but we're doing a lot more um, introspection about who we are, how we want to live and you know what it is that we want to spend our beautiful days and moments doing. Yes. And along with that comes this, I, I like to say the unmasking that we've worn these layers of masks and we know who we are, our dear friends know who we are, but the world sometimes sees us, you know, in a way that isn't truly us. So that's where I think it's so beautiful, Lisa, is that, you know, you get someone to be their true self. And then the result, I mean, your photography shows it, then you capture that in a photograph for them. And it's almost like this, you know, if, if they never put the photograph anywhere, but in their room to look at each day, it's got to be very valuable to remind them of you know, this is who you are and it's beautiful, you know? I agree. Yep. And they get to decide. We all get to decide the answer to that question. Yeah. Well, I'm honored 
you've joined us and I thank you for taking your time today. Lisa was also the speaker last two months ago yeah. at our monthly member Zoom conversation. And over the course of time, these monthly talks, um, in addition to the, you know, we'll probably have two or three different other Zoom talks each week from other groups, but these, these talks are very, they're open and anyone can, from 333 can jump in, are so valuable and so beautiful. And so I was so pleased to see um, that people really enjoyed this conversation. I think a number of people, like you say, entered the conversation thinking, oh, is she trying to get me to figure out how I'm gonna pose and what angle I should be having, <laughs> you know? Right. And they were all so beautifully, pleasantly surprised, I think at um, the, the core um, discussion. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for arranging this, for your, your tenacity in working through it and making it happen. Thanks. Have a beautiful day, Lisa. You too. Thanks, Diana. Bye.